So let's go to the to the second uh, to the second part and talk about tissue management uh, before impression. Either if you are using um, analogic uh, technique like a VPS impression, or if you are using a intraoral scanner, a digital approach. Uh, as a disclaimer. Uh, I am a medical uh, medical consultant for EMA territory for uh, for Centrix Dental. The products that I'm going to show you those are from uh, from Centrix, but it's more important uh, the technique and what you can achieve uh, in terms of uh, gingival retraction by using uh, chemical means. We are used to retraction cord. I still use retraction cord, and uh, in some cases it's uh, irreplaceable especially when you have a deep uh, sub-gingival margin. Uh, the retraction cord is considered to be the, the golden standard, especially when you are using uh, double cord technique. And why double cord? In the first place, you have the, the first retraction cord that will push the gingiva in a more apical way. So by pushing the gingiva away, you can have more uh, visual access to the limit of the preparation, especially when you are uh, preparing, preparing sub-gingivoli. And then you are placing the second retraction cord. This one, it's uh, a little bit more wider. It's more thicker. So this one will push on the horizontal uh, direction, the, the gingiva. After that, you are removing the second retraction cord and then you are um, uh, moving fast and uh, taking the wash impression material and take the, the impression. Keep in mind that you have around 30 seconds uh, since you are removing the second retraction cord to place the impression material. Otherwise, the gingiva will collapse and you have to uh, redo it again. So this is the regular technique, it's speed. So you are taking the retraction cord usually soak it in the astringent solution to stop the bleeding and also promote uh, further promote the gingival retraction so what i'm going to show uh, to you right now those are two products designed for uh, gingival retraction and especially for uh, stopping the bleeding uh, those are uh, called access edge and access flow uh, they are uh, cowling based uh, retraction material. They are containing also um, uh, an astringent, aluminum chloride. And basically they are uh, one and the same product. What is different between them is the uh, viscosity. So it's a matter of preferences. Some uh, dentists will like more access flow because it's more fluid. It will be uh, much easier to wash it away. I myself, I prefer more access edge because it will have a thicker uh, consistency. And even when you are applying this material at the gingiva level, it will mechanically push the gingiva. And you have also the gingi cap. Those are compression cap that you can uh, use them together with the retraction material and further uh, promote the gingival retraction. So if you have a mixture by chemical and uh, mechanical retraction. And how they are working? So in the first place, when you're applying the material, the aluminum chloride will uh, generate a vasoconstriction. You, ha you have a vasoconstriction, you have less uh, blood flow. So the gingiva will shrink the, the volume. And then the cowling clay will take, uh, will take over and it will start to absorb the water from the gingiva. And further, uh, further on, uh, perform a gingival retraction and um, lower the volume of the gingiva. It works great for um, uh, also stopping the, uh, the bleeding. You can use them uh, by themselves uh, and replacing uh, the retraction cord, or you can use them in a double cord technique and in this case, you are placing a retraction cord, the double zero, triple zero. And instead of placing the second retraction cord, you are uh, placing this cowling clay and you'll have uh, also gentle retraction, stopping the bleeding and uh, it will uh, cause less gingival trauma. So 
let's uh, see how Xsage will perform. So you are injecting, you are placing the material in the gingiva sulcus. Take a look at the gingiva, it's getting whiter at the same time when you are applying the material because of the uh, vasoconstriction. After two, three minutes, you are washing thoroughly. Keep in mind, you should wash really, really well. Wash with a lot of pressure. Don't be afraid. You'll have no secondary bleeding. After that, you are just drying the field and you are uh, performing the, the impression. Here, it's a double core technique because we have subgingival uh, margin. So in the first place, I place a, a double zero retraction cord, but instead of placing the second retraction cord, I use access edge as a secondary retraction cord. Here, it's another case. Here, I will not use a retraction cord. I will use, I will use only access edge. So after preparing the, the tooth, place access edge. And because we want more retraction, I will place the gingy cap, ask, ask the patient to bite, and you'll have also mechanical retraction in an apical direction by the pressure of the biting force of the patient. And that's the situation, that's the, the impression. And you can clearly see here the margin without using any retraction cord. And this is access flow. As I told you, they have the same chemistry, access edge and access flow. This one, it's uh, a little bit more fluid. It will have a thinner tip. Here is just a, a demonstration to make an idea about the consistency of the material. As with access edge, apply the material, leave it in place for two, three minutes. If you have a preparation, you also can use a uh, gingy cap, the compression cap. After two, three minutes, wash it really well. And then you are, can perform the uh, impression. Of course, you can use this material if you have, for example, uh, interdental uh, a proximal decay or a gingival uh, close to the gingival decay. So you'll have inflamed uh, gingiva and you'll have a lot of bleeding. Use this material to stop the bleeding. So, in theory, everything sounds good. Let's see uh, right now how it uh, will act in reality. We all know that uh, retraction cord, the classical approach, it will generate around 0 0.5 millimeter uh, of uh, retraction. So let's see how access edge and access flow will uh, perform um, in comparison with the retraction cord. This is the uh, initial uh, situation, old composite filling. We have some um, chips from, uh, from the later, uh, lateral incisor. So the patient came in the, uh, with the main complaint, with the chief complaint uh, about aesthetics. So here we have the provisionals in place because the patient um, was uh, gone for two, three months, you can see here bacterial infiltration. So the provisional cement start to get uh, infiltrated by a bacteria. And keep in mind before uh, cement, a uh, final crumb, you should always clean really well the tooth surface. If you have biofilm in there, you'll have no adhesion. You are risking secondary decay or you are risking uh, decementation. So we are removing the provisionals. We are taking a digital impression, clean the teeth really well. This is with sandblasting, but we are generating a lot of bleeding. And that's why I'm using XSH to stop the bleeding and also to perform some gingival retraction. I will start to wash after two, three minutes access it really well. And you can see the gingival retraction because there are some bits of cement that well, they weren't visible. I will take the second scan and I'll overimpose those two situal, uh, the clinical situation. And as you can see, after using access edge, we have a gingival retraction of 0 
point fifty four. So the gingiva retraction um, generated by XSH alone without any retraction cord was on par with the uh, golden standard technique with a uh, two re uh, retraction cord with the double cord technique. So by himself, XSH it's really effective in uh, generating uh, gingival retraction as uh, and uh, as you can uh, saw it also stopping really efficient the bleeding so let's go uh, this is the final case after cementing the veneers and right after uh, uh, removing the excess cement so let's start the the presentation let's go further in the presentation with more clinical cases and here this is a preparation with uh, with a shoulder it's a little bit uh, sub gingivoli but of course after preparation we are going to have some bleeding i will apply excess edge leave it for two three minutes and take a look here the bleeding has stopped i will take the impression and this is after uh, casting the model you can clearly see and every dental technician can see the the margins and th that retraction was generated only by access edge without using any retraction cord so you have um, also gingival retraction and also you have uh, stopping the bleeding uh, with access edge Another case with the Emacs crown. This is the initial case. So uh, in the central uh, incisor, those are two PFM uh, old crowns. You can see on the lateral incisor um, old composite fillings. After removing the crowns and the and the fillings, because the margin it's deep subgingivally, we are going to use a retraction cord. But instead of using the double cord technique, we are going to use access edge over the first retraction cord. Apply access edge. Leave it for two, three minutes in place. Wash it really well. Leave the first retraction cord in place as usual. Don't take it out. Those are the provisional. And those are the final uh, crowns right after cementation that's why you can see here the the black triangle but that close in uh i think six month uh time this is an old case uh, it's a case done i think seven six seven years ago another case let's see how effective uh, access edge and uh, access flow will be for stopping the bleeding this is a case for uh, cementation. In this case, uh, I didn't place a temporary crown in here. So when the patient came back for the, uh, the final crown, you can see a lot of uh, bacterial infiltration. You'll have a lot of biofilm. And as I told you, right now, if you are cementing uh, the final crown over this tooth, for sure you are going to have in time secondary you are going to have a decay under the crown or you are going to have a loose crown so in the first place you should clean really well the preparation i will use uh, intraoral sandblasting this is aqua care but as always when you are cleaning really well a, uh, a tooth you are going to have a lot of bleeding there is no other way you cannot clean it without generating the bleeding once you have bleeding, you cannot cement. So in this case, we should perform hemostasis in the first place, stopping the bleeding. So I will place access edge. I will place a gingy cap, ask the patient to bite. And because I don't use any retraction cord, I will not produce any uh, gingival trauma wash it really really well and right now the tooth is clean we have stopped the bleeding and now you can go further with the uh, cementation procedure and i will use uh, absolute here 
Uh, it's also cement from uh, Centrix, which is a uh, cell fetch, uh, dual cure uh, cement. Another case with the uh, Emax veneers. This is an initial situation, also old composite fillings with uh, the image after preparation. I will use only XSH in this case for uh, Gingy Valley retraction without using any retraction cord. As you can see here, we're having a visual result you can clearly see by the naked eye the Gingival retraction. Those are the, the provisional uh, in place. They are uh, held in place by a spot edge technique. And those are the final veneers done from uh, Emacs. Another, uh, another case with an uh, Emacs crown. So we'll take care of this uh, premolar, which had a root canal uh, treatment. So this is the preparation uh, procedure. Also, the margin is sub gingivoli in this case. And I'll use access edge. Take a look at the gingiva, how it's getting whiter when we are applying this material because of the vasoconstriction. Place gingy cap as the patient to bite for two, three minutes. Wash it really, really well. And now you'll have a dry field, you have gingival retraction, you can perform the impression. So you can clearly see here the margin of the preparation that it's easy to, to tell. Here it's another view. And this is the cementation uh, procedure. Another case with uh, PMMA, uh, provisional crowns. So this is the initial situation, a patient that like a lot to, dr uh, to drink a lot of uh, uh, juices. So uh, especially Coke, and you can see what uh, they have done to his teeth. He has a complete uh, erosion. In the first session, I treat the uh, central incisor, the 21, number 21. Uh, he had a fracture with an open uh, pulp chamber, so I'll perform a root canal treatment. I'll place a glass fiber post and um, build it uh, with a core buildup. This is the impression session. So you see here a retraction cord in place. So we are going to use a double cord uh, technique, but in this case, we are not going to use also a retraction cord as a uh, uh, secondary uh, uh, retraction. We are going to use access edge. So place a double zero cord, place access edge, this is the conformation of the gingy cap. Place the gingy caps around the preparation as the patient to bite. After two, three minutes, remove the gingy cap, wash it really, really well. I told you, don't be afraid to wash with a lot of pressure. You are not going to see secondary bleeding. So you have hemostasis, you have a dry field, you have gingival retraction. Keep the first retraction cord in place, apply uh, wash material and though this is the cast stone and again well, during the cementation procedure I will use again access edge to care, uh, uh, take care of uh, fluids on the gingival level 
also to have gingival value retraction and we'll, uh, I will have exposed uh, margin and also I will control the bleeding. So as you can see, uh, this material will have uh, double utilization during impression and also during the cementation procedure. After two, three minutes, you just wash it really well. This is the cementation procedure. And those are Emacs crowns. I forgot to take uh, a picture after cleaning the, the cement. Another case with uh, PMMA provisionals and uh, uh, with a uh, zirconia final crown. Uh, this is the situation after I uh, perform, uh, I prepared the, the teeth and uh, made the provisional bridge on the central and the lateral incisor. So this patient uh, had some also two implants. It was a difficult uh, case. As you can see, there is a retraction cord in place. I will use double cord technique with a retraction cord and after that I will place access edge. This is after I wash away access edge after two, three minutes. You can see the impression and transfer abutments over the implants. This is the provisional uh, bridge, the provisional work uh, done from uh, PMMA. It was uh, kept in place for six months. This is the cast uh, model stones. The final work was milled. This is a exocad uh, design. And this is the, uh, the final work done from, uh, from zirconia. So also zirconia over implants, the frontal area and the, the lateral, the second uh, quadrant here, uh, everything was done from uh, zirconia. Another view. And another case with the uh, Mort's zirconia crowns. I think this one is the, the last one. So also a complex situation uh, will have three bridges, one in the first uh, quadrant on the uh, incisor group, also over the implants in the second uh, quadrant and also in uh, individual crown on the uh, number 27 uh, tooth here. So this is the impression session. A double zero cord in place. I will place access edge to further promote the gingival retraction. And also I want to take care of the inflamed gingiva here. I don't want any bleeding during the impression. So I will apply access edge. One uh, dose of uh, access edge is enough for around uh, four or five preparations. So it's, it's enough material in there. With two doses, you can uh, perform gingival retraction all the teeth in this case. Don't go too much subgingivally. Just place the, the nozzle right over the retraction cord. Don't try to get too deeper into the sulcus. So you are doing slowly. Just be sure you are placing material all over the sulcus. If you need to make any adjustment to the material, don't take a metal spatula because uh, the material will stick to the metal. Use a cotton roll. After two, three minutes, wash it really, really way. And now you have a dry field, you have stopped the bleeding, you have a gingival retraction, apply the uh, impression material. This is with the custom tray because we have also some implants there. This is the open tray. And this is the final impression. And now this is the cementation 
session after removing the provisional uh, crown and bridges. Again, using uh, intraoral sandblasting with AquaCare to remove uh, every bit of uh, provisional cement and to be sure that we are removing any biofilm. But as always, when you want a clean teeth, you are going to have some bleeding in there. there. There is no other way. Once you have bleeding, you cannot cement. So in this case, the first thing that you want to do is to take care of the bleeding. So what we can do in this case, of course, we are going to use Exosage for stopping the bleeding to have gingival retraction and also to have a dry field. Be sure you are placing also on the oral side. As you can see in the mirror, there is also some bleeding in there. Make any adjustment with the cotton roll, don't use a spatula. This is after washing really well, access edge, drying the field, and now you can go further with the cementation procedure. Now you have thin, uh, you have clean surfaces, you have gingival retraction, you have a dry field, you have no gingival uh, liquid uh, uh, seepage there. So you have the, the best world for adhesion here. I will use resin cement for the, for the teeth. I will use a temporary, long temporary cement uh, to cement it over the, the implants. Tap like curate just to put the cement in a wax-like state so it will be easier to, uh, to clean it, all the surplus from there. And on the bottom is the initial situation. On the top is the final work. So any questions? Okay, thank you.